All right, guys, welcome back to the RV8 Sierra Alpha build channel. This is the long awaited primer video. <laughs> To start with the eco clean it's just a cleaner it's going to clean up any of the grease or uh, any other chemicals and stuff that might already be on the skin with this being new aluminum there's really not a whole lot that you're removing this system always also works just as well if you're removing paint there's another product that you use to help strip the paint uh, and then clean the aluminum uh, to repaint and prime so after we've cleaned it then we're going to follow it up with an eco etch and that's just going to etch up the aluminum and give it a little bit of tooth and some grittiness for the primer to actually adhere to. And then finally, we're using the Eco Prime. I'm using the smoke gray color. There's a lot of different options, but uh, this is the color I chose to go to. It's, it's a little bit of a lighter gray. They do have a charcoal gray and several other colors as well. I'll talk real quick about this lid that I've got. I'll throw the link in the description down below. This comes from Rockler Woodworking. It's really handy to make one in a quart size as well as a gallon size. It's nice because this crank up here is attached to an auger inside the paint can or the primer can in this case. It allows you to stir up that paint inside there real easily. It gets all the way to the bottom. It does a great job of stirring it up. It's also got these locks that lock it down tight and there's a little rubber seal under the lid there. So the nice thing is you just pop the lid off that can one time and you can leave this on here and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, taking it off, putting the, the lid back on, removing the lid the next time you prime. So I've had this on here for probably about six months or so from the last time I primed. And then it's also got a nice handy little pour spout that makes it nice and easy to pour into your bucket. As far as my spray gun, I'm using a 3M product. I'll throw the link for this as well down below. Again, I, I don't like spending a whole lot of time cleaning up uh, afterwards. Uh, I, I just know that that's my vice. So what's really nice about this, the needle stays attached. It's really easy to clean. You also have all these different nozzle tips that you can attach. So this is a 1.4 millimeter that I'll be using today. Uh, they also make you know, 1.2, 1.8, 2.0, a uh, handful of different sizes that uh, based on your application, whether you want a heavier coat or if you're doing, uh, you want a finer spray for paint, something like that. Uh, so again, super easy to change out the nozzle on here, so I like that. And then the other really nice benefit of this system is you've got the cup itself that has all the measuring stuff on it. Now, in my case, I choose to actually measure or mix by weight rather than volume, so I don't really use these measurements. But then it's also, again, to keep the cleanup easy, you've got these removable inserts. You just go inside, so now you're pouring all of your primer in here, mixing it up, and then throw the lid on. And this lid is handy because it's got the filter built into it. So as it strains through the filter, it then comes right out the top into your spray nozzle right into the gun so that's part of what makes the cleanup so easy on the gun is you're not running a lot of spray past that nozzle it's it's really just hitting it right at the, the trail end so again this attaches right on here uh, again they have several different size cups so this is uh, i forget which size this is uh, it's a 14.2 ounce cup it looks like uh, but they make a, a super tiny one uh, it's like six ounces or something like that, all the way up to like a 20 ounce, uh, or maybe even bigger than that if you're doing a much larger project. This is just kind of an in-between size, so that's why I chose to go this route. You could buy several. Again, that's part of the, the benefit of this setup is it's real easy to change the size that you're working with. Um, so again, uh, it's a 3M gun. Works really well. Uh, I'm a fan of it. You'll see when I spray that, uh, I mean, I'm by no means a expert painter. This is uh, when I painted the vertical stabilizer. That was the first time I've ever done any kind of painting with an actual paint gun. Uh, another quick thing I'll throw at you here is 
all of these products and, and steps that I'm following are based on what exists today at the shooting of this video. So always make sure that you follow the instructions. All these bottles come with instructions on mixing and, and dilution uh, as well as, and, and for that reason, I'm not gonna go into too much with what to dilute or how to dilute it. Uh, Cause again, they do have very good instructions on there as well as on their website. They tell you exactly what percentage to dilute it based on whether it's, you know, good new metal, uh, old aluminum, et cetera. So, uh, the same thing with the primer. They give you good instructions on diluting that. So the first step, we've got our Eco Clean. We're going to be using to go ahead and just clean off any of the surface here. Now the biggest thing you're going to notice using this uh, Eco Clean, it's going to remove any kind of dust, dirt, grime, whatever you got already on your surface. And we're just using the clean white ter uh, terry cloth, some warm water, and we're just going to go through and wipe all this down. That terry cloth does not need to be very wet, just damp. See, this is actually all the red lettering that's on here. It's just coming right off. It's doing a really good job cleaning all this up. It's also going to take any kind of sharpie markings that you might have on the skin off. So make sure if there is any markings that you want, you kind of keep an eye on what side of the project you're working on so that after we're done, before you take it to prime, you can kind of relabel it. Uh, what I usually do if I have a specific part that maybe I forget what it is or something or might forget, I'll use some uh, masking tape and I'll put that on the cardboard where I'm actually going to be doing the priming to label the part. And then I'll cover that with another piece of masking tape so that any primer overspray that gets on it, uh, I could just remove that afterwards and then uh, be able to still see what I've got. So again, with this being new aluminum, it's not a whole lot of dirt or grime. The uh, material itself, or the uh, Eco Clean that you're using, the chemical, is not super abrasive or anything. So really, you don't need gloves. I like to wear gloves though, just to make sure I keep any of the oils from my hand from getting onto the skin as well. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. You're just kind of cleaning up anything that might be on there that you don't want. So I'll go ahead and speed through the other side and the rest of the parts so you can just see the finish cleaning the product. And then we're gonna go through and do the etch next. All right, after we finish doing the Eco Clean, we're gonna go ahead and run over the entire wing again with just a clean, damp terry towel. So again, doesn't need to be soaking wet, just doing enough to kind of clean off any residue from that Eco Clean. And then you also want a nice damp surface to work with. 
as we spray on that eco etch. Now that we've finished wiping down the skin with clean water to clean off that Eco Clean, we're just going to go ahead and use the Eco Etch. You want to do about a 36 inch square area. This is a small enough side here on the skin. Basically, I'll just do one side of the rudder at a time. And then you're just using a maroon uh, Scotch Bright pad and you're just using this to kind of help rough up the, the surface, take the shine away. So I'm just going to work kind of small areas at a time and work my way across the rudder skin. Again, just kind of do a little crosshatch pattern, make sure that you got everything. Important thing with this Eco Etch is you want to make sure that you keep this uh, skin damp. You don't want to allow it to dry on the skin. And the other thing is we want to let it stay on here for about three minutes. All right, now that we've uh, gotten about four minutes, we're gonna go ahead and take some warm water here and another clean towel. And then we're just gonna wipe all this etch off of the surface here. We should be left with a nice dull surface. You can see there, that's all the stuff that this edge got off the skin. And it just kind of leaves a nice rough surface for the uh, primer to adhere to. Now that everything is washed off reasonably well with the towel, you want to use either a pressure washer or a hose with high powered nozzle just to make sure we have everything removed from the aluminum. You can see some of the edge coming off the aluminum as we continue to spray it down. Once we have everything rinsed off, we're going to bring it back inside, wipe it down with a clean towel, then allow it to dry before we prime. Now that the rudder skin is completed, we're going to do the same steps all over again, applying the etch to the internal parts using that red maroon pad to rough up the surface of the interior parts. We're going to allow it to set so that that etch can get into the aluminum, then we'll take it outside spray it all down again and then dry it off with a towel allow it to sit and dry before applying the primer all right now we're going to go ahead and mix the primer uh now i'm just like i said using the stewart systems eco prime i've got the smoke gray color see here i've got a little scale i'm going to measure out the primer by weight rather than volume uh one thing that's handy though with this cup it's just got the measurements on the cup so you can actually use the cup for all the different you know if you're doing two to one to one three to one etc uh, and then you've got the little insert cup that makes the cleanup easy you just throw that away so i'm going to use that zero out the scale here and then this is also a nice handy little pour spout so you can kind of track exactly how much you're putting in So I've got about 56 grams 
And then we're also going to go ahead and dilute it about 10% uh, with distilled water. So I'm just going to very easily right about there. And I just bought on Amazon a number of these little popsicle sticks you can get for kids' crafts, etc. So you can just mix this up. Just make sure you got it nice and stirred in there. Should have a nice viscosity to it. And that looks pretty good. Again, what I like about this 3M system, then the lid has the filter built in. I don't know if you can really see that there, but the filter's built in. So when you put this lid on, and then you place it on top of the air gun, it's gonna filter it as it goes into the air gun. So that way, again, you eliminate the step of having to run it through a filter. You've also got these removable uh, covers here, or caps rather, for the different uh, spray viscosities. So uh, this one I'm using is a uh, 1.4. Uh, you can go a couple different ways. So like I said, I'm going to use the 1.4. If you wanted a heavy build, uh, they recommend a 1.8. I'm, I'm not going to go with a heavy build. Uh, this should have a little bit smoother of a finish with the 1.4 and by diluting it that 10 percent with the water now i'm going to go ahead and get the air gun set up and then we'll be able to get priming All right, guys, we just finished priming all of the parts to the rudder. So make sure that you subscribe and the next video we'll start putting to the rudder together, riveting it uh, all together. If you have any questions about the prime process that I used, any of the products that I use, uh, Stuart Systems a little bit more, I can go into it. Feel free to comment below. Otherwise, click that uh, like button and subscribe and I'll see you next time.